Good morning, Lambs, and good morning to all of our Christian friends joining us via Facebook and live streaming. It's good to be in the midst once again and to have you to be present with us in this service. We want to begin with our call of worship. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with tambourine and dancing. Praise him with strings and flute. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with the resounding cymbals. But everything that had breath, praise the Lord. Praise. I've got another yes, Lord. So 
Our scripture lesson this morning gives us an understanding of the things that took place post-resurrection with our Savior, Jesus Christ and his disciples. We find that it would be a time of preparation and a time of final instruction. So I invite you to turn into him in your word in your Bibles to John 21st chapter verse 15 to verse 17 and then to Matthew chapter 28 verses 18 to 20 in John chapter 21 <laughs> We have these words. Jesus Christ, he can have the swords or Greek states Peter back into the fold of his most trusted disciples. And we read as follows. When he finished meeting, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, we know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, we know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, Be my sheep. And then after you kept me, verses 18 to 20, simply gives us. <clears throat> Commission as Jesus had given it unto the disciples prior to his ascension back into heaven. And it reads as follows But Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to be, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. The Word of God for the people of God. Amen. We come to the prayer of praise and exaltation. Because whenever we go before our, our God and our Creator, we must go before Him 
in the mindset of praise and exhortation. We will ask that any who are tuning in that would leave the names of those that you want left on the altar, that we might pray for them during this week. We ask you now just for a moment to go into your tent doors <clears throat> and prepare your hearts and minds for prayer. Father God, we come in the name of Jesus the Christ, one who died and was raised from the dead. As he said he would be. We thank you, Father, that we celebrate and remember that great day in Christianity on last week. And now as we prepare to go into service once again, Lord, just lift up our hearts and our minds. Lord, just do for us what only you can do. You know what we're going through. You know the struggles we are enduring. You know the pains that we're going through. You know the ups and downs that we are struggling with. Get everything about us. God knows. So I pray for you this morning is that you relieve all your prayer and your concerns on the mighty throne of Almighty God. Knowing that you will not only listen and hear your prayer request, but he will just say answer each and every one in his own time. Be with us as we prepare our hearts, minds, and our souls to receive the word of God this day. Let us be able to join in with the singing, or with the praising, with all that will take place throughout this service. We do ask for your forgiveness, Father God. For we have sinned and fallen short of your glory, somewhere along the way this week. We thank you, Father, that even as we are leaving and asking, even our sins and it's on your throne and asking for forgiveness, that you have already begun to forgive it, that you already begun to take those sins and toss them far away from us, that it will not be able to rise up in trouble anymore in this life. We just thank you, Father, because you are such a mighty God, because you reign supreme on the throne, and that, Lord, you just take time to see about us. Even though we're running here and yonder, and many times don't give you the just do, don't think we have enough time to give back to you. Or the resources that we should be given to you, Father, you continue to look down upon us. You continue to bless us. You continue to stand before us with your arms outstretched, calling each and every one of us, Lord, who are heavy laden and burdened to rest that only you can give. We thank you, Father. We just praise you and ask that you have your way the rest of the service. Prepare our hearts to receive your word. And then we'll just prepare us for the rest of this day and even the week to come. For it is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. This is time we have set aside our service as we did last week when we get back to God. And those of you who may be tuning in, we just ask that God is placing on your hearts and minds to <clears throat> get back to God and give something to my house. Uh, we will be appreciative and truly blessed for whatever God has placed on your heart to do at this time.
And Jesus said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of age. That was indeed exciting news. As the last item on our Savior's agenda had been completed. We want to talk and share with you just for a few moments from the idea an unfinished agenda. Throughout our journeys in life, we find that, uh, that there are a multitude of unfinished agendas in society today. There probably are as, are as many personal agendas as there are hidden agendas, all geared towards undermining folk around us all for personal gain. As important or necessary as many of these agendas may appear to be to many people, they are ultimately left unfinished. Because of the lack of resources to see them through, or a vision that is not embraced by the very key people that are needed to see them through to completion. On the other hand, the life or the mindset of the world ultimately gets in the way, distracting and diverting the attention of those involved, causing many agendas to fall apart before they ever get started. But while the agendas of mankind and of the world many times are doomed to fail, there is one agenda that would seem destined for completion. One that will be seen through to completion before our Savior would leave in the presence of his disciples. Last week we celebrated the resurrection of Jesus Christ. A resurrection that conquered death and the grave and granted eternal life to those who embraced Christ as Savior. But God's divine agenda still remain unfinished. Because there were some things of great importance that still had to be done before Christ could return back to his Father in glory. First and foremost, the restoration of Peter or the restatement, however you want to use that term or terminology. And the preparations of the disciples was of paramount importance as they were the key to the completion of this agenda. There would be the forerunners and the leaders of the New Testament church and would carry the mantle of the gospel at the ascension of Christ. The Bible tells us that Jesus had to appear before the disciples on many occasions to both diffuse the fear that still resided in the spirits and doubt that many of them still had. And also to tie up all the things that he had taught them on his earthly ministry. And then there was the assurance that all power and authority had been given to him. And that it was the same power and authority that would be given to the disciples as leaders of the early church. You see, like how it was crucial that the disciples knew what kind of authority and power Christ would be leading with them. And they needed to feel confident before this great work of the church was placed into their hands. But it was the resurrection, the restoration of Peter that had the most interesting twist. 
Peter's restoration or reinstatement as one of the faithful few will come by way of the testing of his faith and his love of his Savior, Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that Peter had become irritated, as we all probably would have, because Jesus asked him three times, do you love me? As far as he's concerned, the first time he answered that question, that should have been case closed. No need to ask it a second time. But Jesus will test in Peter just to make sure where his priorities stood. Because Peter would eventually become the leader of the early church. Jesus wanted to make sure that he was settled, focused, and ready to pick up the mantle of leading the early church. Likewise, my brothers and sisters, many people going in to ministry or just desiring to work in a certain auxiliary in the church are tested by the leaders in the respective churches just to make sure that their priorities are in the right place and that they are ready to truly take on the jobs in ministries and in the auxiliaries that they feel that they are called to serve in. As with any agenda, Everything must be completed down to the last item. And it's no different with God's divine agenda. As the main focus point throughout the ministry of our Savior was reaching people with the gospel of Christ. Reaching people with the good news of the gospel. Giving everyone the opportunity to receive and embrace Christ as Savior. Talking about saving the best for lives. The work had already been started by our Savior. To reach out to the Gentile nation, nations or people with the word of God. You see the work that was initiated by our Savior through his encounter with Gentile people, such as the lady at the well. If you remember your scriptures, your New Testament scriptures, Jesus crossed path many times with Gentile people. He had the opportunity to reach out to a man to talk with them. So the work was initiated, it was started already by our Savior. And now that work had to be continued on with the help of his disciples. He had to be built upon, if you will, by the disciples who would prepare a way for all of us here today until everyone has had the opportunity to receive that gospel message and to receive Christ as Savior. If the disciples did not embrace the work that God through Christ had put into their hands, where would we be today? What would our lives be like today? If they had not taken the mantle of the gospel of Jesus Christ, if they had not settled down and assumed the roles of leaders of the early church. This world will be a much different place to live. Only when all this was initiated with the disciples and the work of the church placed firmly in our hands, would this divine agenda be completed and God's holy seal placed upon it. In this case, my brothers and sisters, and those here at Lighthouse, there will be no tabling of items from that agenda. There will no, almost certainly be no heated argument or debate. There will be no sidebar discussions going on. 
because Jesus prepared the disciples for this great moment in time. And we should thank God today that God's divine agenda was finished and the disciples were able and willing to take the work of the church to a higher level. That not only did we have the opportunity to hear the gospel and to receive Christ, but that all those who will come after us, our children and our grandchildren, our nieces and our nephews, our friends and our neighbors, everybody will come after us. We have the same opportunity that we had and truly fulfill our Savior's great commission. To go out and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. And to all of you today, we want you to be mindful of that great agenda that was left unfinished, but that was completed before Christ went back to being with his father. We just briefly want to extend the invitation to discipleship to those here in the midst. In our midst, those that are tuning in, you can all reach out to myself and let me know the desires of your heart. But we just want to say to you all if you have not received Christ as your Savior, now is the time that you, you need to do it. There are no more tomorrows, there are no more next weeks. God said to each and every one of us, Come now. So if you're looking to join and number to receive Christ, we say to you, you can come and join by baptism if you're in between churches. Or then wait for a short period of time. We'll say we say you come back by way of Christian experience and those that have been away for a very long time. We say come back by way of Christian experience, or as we also say, by the rededication of the faith that still resolves deep down in your spirit. <coughs> However you come, my Christian friends, God wants you to come and to embrace him, that he might embrace you as well. In closing, Difference if you and the closing words will be posted for those listening in. Whatever your agendas might be in life, be careful that you include God in the midst of it. Because any agenda that has not Christ in in the midst of it, or in the center of it, will surely fail. So what are your agendas today? Are they hidden agendas? Are there secret agendas? Are there agendas geared to get you where you think that you need to be? And regardless of how many people you may Heard along the way. <clears throat> Do you have an unfinished agenda that you really didn't go back and to look at? This is our closing words for you. If you have an agenda that has not been completed, put Christ in the midst of it and see what he can do. God bless you and we look forward to tuning in to us on next week.